Money, money, money. Everybody loves money. All jokes aside, but if you're interested in the field of data, you've probably wondered at one point, what is the highest paying data career? So did I when I was first getting started. So I decided to do some research and dig into it a little bit more. I also have a fair bit of experience navigating some of these roles myself. So hopefully that will give you guys some additional context. For those of you who don't know, or maybe you're new here, welcome. My name is Ranesh and I'm a data scientist currently working at a tech startup. The data and articles that I'll be using for this video are all publicly available and will be linked in the description down below. And for each of these career paths, I'll be leaving some resources and learning materials down below for those of you who are interested and navigating or maybe even breaking into those roles. Also, the last few roles that I'll be talking about are probably the most underrated. So if you're looking for a good and very efficient way to break into the field of data, I highly recommend staying tuned until the end. The first and probably the highest paying role in the field of data is the quant or quant analyst role. The salary for this role can range from somewhere around $150,000 to about $300,000 depending on your skill level and company. Honestly, the salary ranges can go a lot higher depending on the industry. Uh, some industries like the fintech industry or even the tech industry with FANG companies can offer a lot more money depending on your skill level. I've seen videos of fresh graduates getting offers from about $400,000 to $600,000 a year. So definitely don't be surprised. The thing about this specific role is that although it has a high pay, it's also very competitive and has a lot of requirements. A lot of people tend to want to become quants early on. I haven't really got the chance to work closely with a quant or a quant analyst, but I do know that their responsibilities are heavily tied towards revenue or finance. As I said before, the barrier to entry is pretty high and requires a lot of expertise within the realms of finance, math, statistics, and some programming. For those of you who are looking to get into this quant role, I highly recommend checking out this course on Coursera. It's about finance and quant modeling for analysts. So uh, if you guys want to check it out, I'll leave a link down in the description below. All right, the next role I want to talk about is data scientists or machine learning engineers. The salary for this type of role ranges from $130 thousand dollars a year to upwards of two hundred and ten thousand dollars a year depending on your skill level obviously there's going to be some variation when it comes to the salary for this specific role just because i've seen open ai machine learning engineers earn upwards of nine hundred thousand dollars a year so yeah take that into account now this role specifically has received a lot of hype recently especially in the past few years just because of the rise of ai mainly llms but specifically a lot of companies are now looking to incorporate machine learning into their workflow or even their app my company, for example, went from zero data scientists to two data scientists in the span of a year. There are also various different sub roles within this role, like data science analysts or data science engineers. So make sure to take that into consideration. These sub roles are more like pivot roles. In my opinion, you get a little bit of experience within each niche, which is pretty nice for the data scientist position. Specifically, the technical and theoretical requirements are slightly higher. So you might want to invest in stuff like books or courses like the machine learning specialization by Andrew Ng. Generally, I recommend starting off by learning Python, then understanding the basics of differential equations and linear algebra. And then hopefully you can dive into some different statistical techniques like t test, hypothesis testing, ANOVAs, etc. From there, you can then prioritize the different sectors of machine learning like supervised versus unsupervised learning and then looking at things by problem looking at regression problems classification problems clustering problems and then approaching it from there the thing about machine learning is that it's so broad to the point where it's almost impossible to cover everything at once that's why some people specialize very early on in stuff like computer vision natural language processing etc i personally recommend getting a high level overview of the field first you know understanding the basic models like linear and logistic regression tree-based models bagging and boosting techniques and then you can go into learning how to implement these models at scale. This will help you make an impact much quicker. And in my opinion, it makes you a lot more marketable. If you want a more detailed roadmap on how to become a data scientist, I shared the exact steps that I took on my journey to becoming a data scientist in a separate video. I'll leave that link down below for those of you who are interested. Also, because of the higher technical requirements, these roles tend to be more stringent when it comes to the qualification sought, sometimes even requiring a master's or PhD degree, which means a lot less fresh grad roles. All right, the next role I want to talk about is pretty unknown. It's the data architect role. Now, the salary for this specific role can go from about $150,000 a year upwards to about $230,000 a year. From my experience, these roles are usually much rarer to find. I don't really see many postings for these roles out there. I also don't know if there's any junior positions for a data architect. By that, I mean, I haven't really seen any fresh grad roles or maybe even roles that require less than five years of experience. Data architects or data modelers are heavily involved in the company's data stack. This means that they're heavily involved in the selection of technologies to build their pipelines and the design processes for their uh, data tables, uh, warehouse, or even data lake, and also the security procedures to protect BII and various other things. 
Generally, they have to consider things like scaling, budget, accessibility, and visibility when modeling these things, so it's pretty difficult to get into a role like this without much experience. Also, for those of you who are interested in becoming a data architect, I recommend taking the Advanced Data Modeling course on Coursera. Uh, it's just a high-level overview of what to expect, so yeah, start there and then decide if that's what you want to do. All right, the next and probably the most underrated role in this entire list is the data engineer role. The salary for this role can range from about $100,000 a year to upwards of $170,000 a year or even higher depending on the company. The reason why I think this role is super underrated is because it's very easy to climb the ranks and the competition for this role isn't that high. It also has a very low barrier to entry and a relatively high pay even though it's not really a sexy job. The reason I say that is because when most people think of data they think of machine learning engineers or maybe even data analysts not really data engineers. That's because data engineering is kind of like plumbing you get your hands dirty with raw data clean and build pipelines but they also make a lot of money. It also doesn't really take a lot to get started. One of my mentors who was a data engineer came from a business background and quickly transitioned into a six-figure data engineering role in less than one year. So if you're okay with an unsexy role, I would strongly recommend considering data engineering. Data engineers these days are more so needed for larger companies that deal with big data constantly. Smaller companies, on the other hand, can use tools like Stitch Data or even Fivetran to streamline their ETL process. However, larger companies definitely do need a DE to build, maintain, and monitor their pipelines. Data engineers and data architects are also very likely to work closely with software engineers, cloud ops, and DevOps teams. The thing about data engineering is that it's so big that so many new tools and technologies have been created in the past few years and even sub roles like data analytics engineers or data warehouse engineers have been created to sustain some of the workload. Generally for this specific role you will need a strong foundation in SQL and Python and even some ETL tools like uh, DBT, uh, Snowflake, Databricks, Redshift, uh, some other tools like Azure, Spark and stuff like that. If you're interested in this role great I'll leave some recommendations of courses and certifications that I found helpful from companies like IBM and Microsoft. The last role I want to talk about in this video is the data analyst role. For this specific role the salary depends heavily on the experience and the domain expertise. The ranges that I found for this role are from about $85,000 a year to about $140,000 a year. I think I also read somewhere that data analytics is one of the unhappiest jobs based on some sort of poll, but I think that's because of the ambiguity of the role. As a data analyst, I've been asked to do stuff like manual data entry, downloading and importing Excel sheets from one file to another, uh, monitoring and tracking data that we don't currently have, uh, doing custom randomized control tests uh, for feature launches that we've launched to the entire customer base. Uh, so it can't really be random uh, and many other things that we don't really talk about. But yeah, I kind of see why uh, it's one of the unhappiest jobs in the world or I can understand the reasoning behind it. However, I do still think that data analytics is a great starting point for those of you who are interested in getting into the industry. The barrier to entry is very, very low and the pay is relatively high for the requirements. It's also a great way to gain exposure into other aspects aspects of the field which can help you pivot into another role very quickly. A lot of the higher paying roles that I mentioned before do tend to require some sort of educational requirement like a bachelor's degree, a master's degree, or even three years of experience if you don't have either of those. So a role like this can help you gain that experience quickly and pivot into a higher paying role or a role that you're more comfortable with and give you the experience and exposure that you need to understand that role better uh, as compared to someone who's coming off a bachelor's degree or a master's degree with no real experience. I find that all you need to start in this role is high school level math and that some familiarity with tools like SQL, uh, Looker or Power BI as a BI tool or even Google Sheets and Excel as a sheet analyzing tool and if you want to get fancy you can learn a programming language or tool like Python or R. I've talked about this role a lot in the past and I've even recommended courses that I've taken personally which helped me break into the field like the Google Data Analytics certification. I still think that's the best one out there uh, for those of you who are looking to get started with no experience at all. I'll also leave more specific role-based uh, certifications and courses down below depending on your interests or maybe your background if you're an economics major, maybe you're interested in becoming a uh, financial analyst or maybe you're into product management and you want to be a product analyst or a business analyst or stuff like that, I'll leave a couple of course recommendations down below. I know these positions and roles tend to have a lot of overlap, but I think that's a good thing. I think with that, it's much easier to gain exposure to other roles and pivot from one role to another if needed. Also, I know money isn't everything, but it definitely does help. But on the other hand, just because a role has a higher average pay doesn't mean it's the better choice for you. Generally, some of these higher paying positions demand a lot more required 
requirements in terms of education, experience and stuff like that. So if you're looking to get into the field quickly and easily, maybe choose something that is more accommodating for that. It also fluctuates a lot depending on demand, but some of the roles that I mentioned are more stable like data engineering. They tend to have a constant demand and a very low supply. So uh, there's a lot of opportunity there. For those of you who are interested in getting into the field of data, I hope this video helped you out by showcasing or maybe shining a light on positions that you didn't really know of, or maybe even helping you filter down your choice uh, when it comes to qualifications and skills required. If you're still stuck and have no idea which one to pick, I strongly recommend starting off as a data analyst. I think it's a great starting point and you can only really go up from there. If you do choose to stay as a data analyst, you can climb the ladder and climb to a more senior or maybe a managerial role, which can dramatically increase your pay. It also has a really low barrier to entry. You can realistically learn the skills needed to succeed in that role within three to six months, depending on how much effort you put into it. Also, I wanna preface that the salary ranges that I mentioned in this video can vary heavily depending on stuff like location, company, industry, and stuff like that. But the purpose of this video was to shine a light on positions that you might not have been thinking of or even positions that you might have overlooked just because it was unsexy like data engineering. If I missed any roles that you think is worth mentioning, do leave them in the comment section below. Like I said, all the courses, certifications, and learning resources that I recommend will also be linked down below. If you have any other questions, comments, or concerns, feel free to leave them down below too. If you enjoyed the video or found some value, a like and a subscribe would help the channel out a lot. As always, thank you guys so much for watching the video. If you want to learn more, YouTube thinks you'll like this new video.